Let's continue in studying polynomials by looking at the rational zeros theorem. Uh, this is also called uh, the PQ rule. So let's think about the rational zeros theorem. So let f of x be a polynomial function a x to the n a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a to the 0. In other words, let f of x be a polynomial function with a leading coefficient a to the n and a constant term. The constant term is the term that has um, no x or x to the 0 at the end of a to the 0. Then all rational zeros will be in the form plus or minus p over q where p is the integer factors of a zero and q is the integer factors of a to the n. That's actually a lot easier than it looks. So let's review it again. Rational zeros theorem says that given a polynomial function, then all rational zeros will be of the form plus or minus p over q, where p is the integer factors of the constant term and q is the integer factors of the leading term. So let's actually look at an example. List all possible rational zeros of g of x is equal to 6x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. So first of all, um, Q here, I'm sorry, P here is going to be the integer factors of minus 4. So the integer factors of 4 is going, are going to be 1, 2, and 4. And the integer factors of Q are going to be the integer factors, uh, Q is going to be the integer factors of 6, which is 1, 2, 3, not 4, not 5, and 6, right? That's how we define P and Q. P is defined from the constant term, and it's the integer factors of the constant term. Q is defined by the leading coefficient. It's the integer factors of the leading coefficient. So all rational zeros will be plus or minus P over Q. They will all be in that form. So in, that, in other words, uh, you go plus or minus. What I do is I, I start with the 1, and that's 1 over 1, or 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 6. And then I start with the 2. That's 2 over 1. 2 over 2, but 2 over 2 is just 1. I don't need it again. Then it's 2 over 3. And then it's 2 over 6. But 2 over 6 is just 1 third, and I already have 1 third down, so I don't need that one as well. Then I have 4, 4 over 1, 4 over 2, but 4 over 2 is just 2, and I have 2 down already. 4 over 3, and 4 over 6. 4 over 6 is 2 thirds, I have that down or other. So in other words, all my integer factors, I'm just going to rewrite this as plus or minus 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 sixth, 2, 2 thirds, 4, or 4 thirds. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 possible candidates for a rational zero. So let's think about what we mean by a rational zero first. A rational number is simply a real number that can be written as a fraction. And that's what a rational number is. So for example, 4 is a rational zero because 4 is a real number. 2 thirds is a rational number. 5 minus 5 sevenths. These are all rational. Squares.
square root of 11 is not irrational. Pi is not rational. Phi is not rational. E is not rational. Square root of 13 is not rational. 5 square root of 7 is not rational. All of these are not rational. So you may have a 0, which is square root of 11, but it's not a rational 0. Also not rational or imaginary numbers. So minus 6i, 2 thirds i, 4 plus 3i, square root of 11i. All of those numbers are not real. And because they're not real, they're also not rational. Rational numbers are defined only as real numbers, which can be written as a fraction. So let's go back to this example. We're not saying here that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 real, rational zeros. We're saying uh, all rational zeros must be among these 16. Let's look at another example. How many possible rational zeros are there for k of x is equal to 10x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 4? So they're all in the form of plus or minus p over q. P is defined by the constant term 4, so that's going to be uh, 1, 2, and 4. It's all integer factors of the constant term. Q is going to be all integer factors of the leading term, the, the leading coefficient. So that's 1, 2, not 3, not 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 5, and 10. So here we're going to have plus or minus. What I do is I start with 1p and do each cute. So that's 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 5, and 1 over 10. Then I go to 2. 2 over 1. 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so I'm not going to write that one down. 2 over 5. 2 over 10. But 2 over 10 is 1 fifth, and I have 1 fifth already. So let's go to 4. That's 4 over 1. 4 over 2 is 2, so I don't need that. 4 over 5. And 4 over 10. But 4 over 10 is 2 over 5, and I have a 2 over 5, so that's it. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But it's plus and minus, so there are 16. So I have 16 candidates for rational zeros. So there may, in fact, be no rational zeros at all. But all the rational zeros are among these 16. And that's called the rational zero theorem. More commonly, more colloquially, it's known as the PQ rule.